down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors, experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. But then I realized when, you know, how did I get to 135? You know, well, it boils down to I thought my first goal was like 25 units. And then I'm going to be rich <laughs> right? at 25. And then my mentor was like, he told me this one thing. He's like, Stephen, when you get $1,000 cash flow a month, passive, it's awesome. It's hard. When you get to five, it's murder. You know, when you get to 10, it's easy from there. And he's right. Let me tell you, when you get to 10,000 pass flow, cash flow, it's a joke from there. And the, the point is, okay, I set a goal for 25. It didn't provide enough. Then I was like, okay, 50, I'm going to be set free. 50,000 a month. 50, no, 50. Well, I'm already there, but I'm With already. units. Yeah. Yeah, I gross 50, but I don't net that. So let's just be clear. Let, this is where it gets crazy. So 25, you know, like if I was coaching a conservative person, I, you only need 10 or 15 to retire, mm-hmm. you know. T- so 25, then I was ambitious. I pushed myself. So then I was running 50 units about 14 hours a week. Well, I still was owning the DJ business. Wow. So I, 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 and I have a whole course on 10 hours a week running my real estate as a landlord. If what's his name can do a Mike Butler, you know, auto, landlord on autopilot, yep. a, a cop, I, you know, and I base that my business model back then around his book. But when I got to 50, I was like, it wasn't enough economically because mm-hmm. there's always – some repair there's always a vacancy mm-hmm. and so you literally have to double it I, i'm i'm being i mean if you really want to live the the freedom and you really want to live your dreams and you want to live large you know so i was like 100 units mm-hmm. so then i got to 85 by myself and it was like it was a full-time job and then i just started hiring i have a general manager now and i have a property manager and i have a construction company a lot of that but but it's still at a hundred, you know. I'm only netting five thousand dollars a month now. I'm always bu- constantly buying houses, and I try not to put that money. I don't take that money out. I try to keep reinvesting it and growing it. Mm-hmm. But you know, now I'm like, do I really need another house? No. But now I realize that you can, and you know, and then I push myself to buy this property properties in Florida which is way out of my comfort zone, which blew my mind the other day was I filled out a loan doc in Florida. Awesome. And and I, and I can't believe they even believe me. You know, (laughs) they're like, I got this proof. I got this pre-approval letter on my wall. I'm like, you're willing to give me money for an asset in Florida. That's awesome. Wow. It's true. You can. And I didn't think that you could do this. And so I, I, it hasn't been easy. I haven't closed this transaction. But I was like, man, you can do anything. And so I think, why not? You know, I, if, you know J- Jim Rohn says, you know, trees don't stop growing. We humans do. And like, so I want to give back. I want to, I want to, you, know, I, I, you know, I want to help you. I mean, if I was chained to a job, I, I spent two hours with you. You know, you know, and it's not, you know, of course I quantify every minute. How much money am I making? What's my square footage per the off? I mean, I'm psycho, right? Because that's how you learn. But you can't do that if you got a nine to five job. Sure. You know, I see kids come to my classes and they, they get in trouble because they go back late because I talk too much. They show up at, when, when I have a seven o'clock class at 7 a.m. and we're there till nine. I know they're getting in trouble and I feel for them. But that's how it takes. It takes because you you've got to do that if you want. And so, I I you know, the the more houses I buy, the more risk I take, the more liability I have. But why not? You know right. why not? Because I'm I, now I have the capability to give more. I, I mean I bought one of my workers a truck. I mean after I got back from, I, I think you talked I, I talked about that on the podcast. Like I have to upgrade people. Right. He's a worker. He's been working for me for three years, dying on the sewer line. You know, mm-hmm. and now I didn't just write him. A, I didn't give him the pink slip. I was like, okay, bro. I was like, look, this truck costs fifteen grand. If you hold on 
for three years, that's $5,000 a year, you can have this truck for free. Now, you're going to maintain this truck right now. You're going to put it in your name because I don't want the liability. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get sued because you kill somebody. <laughs> I'll run some chick over. I want you to you know, maintain the truck. But after three years, you don't have to make me any payments. You can buy me out at any time, and you own the truck for free. I, awesome. I don't think you can. I couldn't do that with 10 units. I couldn't do that at my day job, but I just changed this guy's trajectory. His life has changed. Yeah, he's he's probably on my nuts now. Yeah, he calls me back a little bit faster. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I hope you know, so. It works. Right. And I'm like, so I'm like, how can I buy more people $15,000 trucks? I love I'm it. I'm being serious. Like, how can you? I got to make more money. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I want more RC cars. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I got to repair these effing things. Right. I'm just, you know they're only seven dollars for some, three dollars for some parts, but you know my brother is hooking me up for free. I'm like, man, I need to. I mean, how cool will it be if I was so large that my brother, you know, he works for nine dollars an hour at AutoZone. I mean, it's just crazy that I'm his brother. <laughs> I live in a different market. I mean, a, we live in the. He lives on the same street. It was one of my rent houses. Wow. Now, I bought that rent house for forty two. He paid sixty five. Uh-huh. I make a thousand dollars a month. He loses six hundred fifty dollars a month. <laughs> so, I mean, this is that's just, get that message, people. Right. I mean, get that message. But I, I mean, I was thinking. I hung out with him yesterday. You know, it's difficult for me to hang out with him. Nothing to be negative, just because there's a lot of wounds there. But I drove off, and I'm. He hates his job. He works at AutoZone. They yell at him because he overclocks his hours. Like. You can only get 24, and he gets 27 because right. he's part time. <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow. You know, they yell at him. They tell him what to do. I mean, I drove off there, and I was like, man, how cool would that be if I could just say, just fix my cars all day. Here's $200 a week because that's what he makes. Oh. I mean, that you can't do that. You know, so people get mad like, oh, you got 100 units. No, I don't want no Cadillac. You know, I got friends that have Corvette dumb. You know, hopefully <laughs> you don't have a Corvette, you know. No, but I'm man, just, I drive a pickup truck. Yeah, I mean, no no disrespect. That's your sure. dream. That's your that's what you want to do, but like I just want to give back. Like I I mean, my ultimate dream is like I, you know, I tutor kids in the hood and I drive to their to where he lives and it's it crushes me. This whole 200 unit apartment complex is all Section 8. I mean, it's scary. When I go up there at 3 o'clock, 3.30, I'm, I mean, 5.30 is when I drop this kid off. I'm scared. Right. Like, I'm like, and I'm a hood rat. You know, I, I can talk ghetto. Now, I'm white. Now, that's a little bit different. But, I mean, how cool would it be that I could, if I could pay somebody $50,000 a year and provide an apartment that they could teach people how to make money teach people not to be lazy teach people how to live life grand Mm -hmm. i mean it would make a huge social impact i mean i mean every every city had someone that was that was their job that they they like boots on the ground like they got a seminar rolling every saturday with balloons and some hot dogs and they're out there saying look don't buy weed or, okay, maybe sell weed. No, I'm just saying, but I'm just saying like, like go to the flea market and buy trinkets with that weed. So, and do a good business. Right. You know, and you know, weed is, is just like selling RC car. I sell RC cars. Yeah. You know, I do today. I import from China. I do because I just, cause I can, cause I like to make ten dollars on a transaction, because it because my motive is that I get a free car. If I do five transactions, I get a free item. Sure. I mean, I love that rich dad, poor dad. He's like, I want a Porsche. That's cool. I'm not down with Porsches, but that's cool for you. But he's like, I got to. His wife was like, you got to go buy a house to pay for that Porsche. You should go buy the Porsche. But don't go buy the Porsche because you've got a small cock and you're, and you're weak and you've got to make yourself feel good. That's where you go wrong. You should buy the Porsche because that's your goal and you're going to fund it 
through your acquisitions of being successful in whatever endeavor you do. Absolutely. You know? Landlordlunch.com. That's coming to Chicago, man. I'm you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna borrow yeah. that. I'm gonna borrow that one from you. You can. I. I my it's dream, a great idea. Know, that, that's my dream. Like you can have the website. Like I'm being serious. Like there's a there is a dream where that, and I'm trying to tell all my friends around the country, like savvy investors is the same thing. Like you open and go to go to landlordlunch.com. They click a button. It's Chicago. They click a button. Ooh. It's Florida. I mean, and and it's like yeah, th- throw you know. Ten dollars a year towards the domain, but like I noticed, like you know, I was I did it for a year and it was it wasn't easy. Like you gotta you gotta prep, you gotta have a room, you gotta do it. And I'm like I'm not getting paid. Like you know I'm motivated. I'm not getting paid. Now you you taught me hey record the damn thing and make five dollars. I'm like <laughs> hey I'm in. All right, right. I'm worth five dollars an hour. You know maybe ten yeah. people will buy it. I'll make fifty dollars. <laughs> I'm like yeah. wow. I just want Maybe to hear I'm, it, man. I want to be a part of it. And I know, you know there's one uh, that you had a wholesale one you taught and you said that your recorder broke. No, I forgot to hit the record. I did. I lied yeah. to you. I That's did. Awesome. I know. I was so excited I did, for that one. Dude. Yeah, I think I, it's just get, we'll get it. But I, I designated somebody now. I'm like, dude, you got to make sure this is recording. Right. Because right. I felt bad because you text me and I was like, <laughs> man, I, I did. I was like, and I kind of like kind of like, well, it didn't work is what I said. <laughs> it didn't work because I didn't hit the button. <laughs> I think that's what you, yeah you said something yeah, I, didn't I, work. I, I like, wanted Damn. to lie to you because I was like I, I mean of course I'm human I'm like this guy I don't want to lose a customer right right but so where can everybody get all this stuff I mean you talked well, about a lot of stuff well savvyinvestors dot com is like a hub which one day will be in Chicago like right now I got a guy in Houston who is actually under savvy I mean not under but he's trying to do his own savvy under the brand sure and then there's one in in, in Tennessee but. I don't know where this is going, but Savvy Investors is kind of the hub. My mm-hmm. website, you know, Landlord. Now I do Savvy Breakfast that rolls out tomorrow. Awesome. Which is, I don't think I'm going to record the first one. And my goal for that is to raise private money. Like, Perfect. And back to the reason Landlord Lunch has been. So I was going to cancel Landlord Lunch. I did it for a year. It's labor. And then one day, my plumber bent me over, like, severely. Like, he, he got me. He got me. <laughs> he got me. Okay. You know, I trusted you. I paid you. You got me. Okay. And I was desperate. And I text everybody on the landlord lunch. And I said, hey, does anybody have a plumber? Mm -hmm. Dude, 10 plumbers in my midst. And it was cool that at least three other investors brought up one plumber. I was like, and I was like, how much is that worth to me? If if I called my boy Joe and you got me a loan, that's worth a thousand bucks. I mean, if I called Joe and I was like, hey, how do you get this printed? Like when you get your book done, you're going to catalog all your all your podcasts. You're going to get them transcribed. You're going to have a hire a writer and you're going to come out with a book in Chicago because you will do it. Good idea. <laughs> I didn't never thought about using the podcast as the uh, the content, but yeah, and then you're going to call me and you're like Van Kallenberg and I'm going to walk you through it and I'm like this is how you do it cuz I've awesome. done it like 6 times now. Awesome. And and so but I was like, man, how much was this worth it to me? <clears throat> how much how much was it if I could find a plumber that I have 135 units they all everybody shits in. How <laughs> can I find a plumber? You know, in my mind I was like, would I pay a referral service 250? Yeah. Was it worth 500 for me? Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to keep rolling with this landlord lunch thing. Because, you know, I got some crackers in there. Cracker, I mean, crackers, like, not white, but, like, you know, like, crack jokes. <laughs> they try to be, like, they talk too much. Like, dude, just shut up. Everybody needs to speak. Mm-hmm. And it's not my the Steve Van Kallenberg show, but no one speaks, so I've got to fill it in. Right, and, right. So that's the landlord lunch. You're the moderator. Yeah, yeah, and definitely do it. Like, and start small. Like, I w- I'll help you. I mean, I have all it done. I, I mean, you just have to follow the plan. It's simple. Okay. You, you don't have to. You don't have to build a website. Now you just. And you know, another kid does one, which is, I think I kind of copied him because he does it the the I don't know the second Saturday, the third Saturday. I don't know. He does it a wholesale breakfast is what he calls it. And because he's a wholesaler, sure. and he really wanted just I don't I mean he, you know he doesn't even wholesale no more, which is hysterical. He he keeps all of his own deals now. 
and he got private money. Right. This kid was a wholesaler begging for money. Then threw this breakfast together, and I went. To, he asked me to speak one time. He's like, "Hey, man, can you come speak at the breakfast?" Okay, and he, he's like, "Well, speak of like what you buy." Oh, that's easy. Mm-hmm. So I spoke in front of you know twenty wholesalers in Oklahoma City, and I told them what I want, and it worked. Yeah. And so, so anyway, now fast forward a year later, I coach this guy. He's He's not even a wholesaler no more. He wholesales for himself. He doesn't sell any deals. And he sure. has so much private money that he's trying to get more deals because that's why he's a wholesaler. Wow. And I'm that's... so proud of that guy. And, I mean, just two, three years ago, that dude was broke, no money. Now he's, he's, he's doing a deal a month minimum, averaging 30. Wow. So he's, I just called him earlier on my way over here. He said his goal is 300000 this year. He's, he's going to hit it. Wow. That's incredible. And, that's, I mean, and I'm not saying this, but I copied him. I'm like yep. – and so, and I was frustrated because of the local RIA group wouldn't let me speak, wouldn't support, wouldn't let me put my book out for free. I was like, <laughs> let me get this straight. You think I'm competition because I'm trying to give away my book? Like, I seriously would, I brought 20 books and slapped them on the table. The chick went off on me. I wow. was like, are you serious? Like, it costs me money to print this. I just want to spread the word. Like, I'm not trying, I'm not selling, I got no coaching. I, I'm not trying to sell some program. Right. And I'm not trying to start a RIA. I'm just like, I'm blessed. I, I have obviously too much money to give away free books. That's one problem. <laughs> I'm like, I, I used to do this for the DJ company. I used to give away t shirts all the time. And my mind was like, I really just wanted a t shirt. But mm-hmm. I would spend $500 a quarter, $2,000 until my mentor started slapping me. He's like, dude, you, you that's pure profit. You're giving away $2,000 a year in free t shirts because I wanted a free t shirt. Right, right. I mean, so I'm giving away books, and I'm like, I, I, you know, I just want to, I mean, just read the book. It's so powerful, but no one reads. In the, the chick banned me from, she's like, you can't do that. <laughs> and I, I just stopped my membership this year, wow. I, and I'm like, and I'm just broken. That was the best Rhea, and now no one goes, and all the all the veterans don't go. It was so cool to, to talk to a guy that has like 200 units and he just says, you know, that guy, that, that's how I met that guy. He's like, I got 500 units. I use wall heaters on all my non HVAC houses. Sure. And because my floor furnaces were breaking all the time and no one fixes floor furnaces in Oklahoma because it's just a, it's just a old uh, trade. Yeah, got a unit or something. Yeah, you can't trying to get under a house and sure. try to fit in it. And you know, the city go gets off on you because it's a pilot light and people are gonna die with emissions. You know, sure. All, you know, every time I change the gas on a house, a tenant they flag me for floor furnaces, and I was like, I gotta get out of floor furnaces, sure, like ASAP. Like, and I, I met that guy, and he's just you know rattled off. Oh, I, you know, wall heaters. Thanks, buddy. Like. <laughs> I never knew that, you know, the power, and that's, of, the power of networking. Yeah. The power of Aria. And that's why I do the landlord lunch. Yep. And I can't, I can quantify that. I have some good friends. It's cool that they show up. It's cool that new people fly. I mean, not fly in, but come from other parts like this dude from Houston came last week. He just moved here and he, you know, the one, the Houston Ria is incredible. They have a class every week. Right. I've seen that. Oklahoma city. We're killing, we're hurting each other. Oh, uh, because you have a book, and I don't want you to promote your book. Sure, right. You know, and the other Rhea is like, yeah, we like you. Now you are competition, Stephen. You realize that, yeah, but we embrace you because you're legit, and we know that you're doing it every day. We know you're buying and selling houses every day because you keep outbidding me. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But, but for years, you've been outbidding me, chumps. You know, <laughs> it's my turn. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. I got a couple more questions. We already kind of talked about the best way for people to contact you, right? Right on the, the website. What? Give, give me an example of the best deal you've done. I want to hear the best deal. You do this to your people. I want to hear. Okay. What, I want to hear yours. Okay, so there's two. I'll, I just want to cover one until I close on the other. Okay. okay. So you know, I try to be, and, I, and I'm not, I don't want to say this to be like I'm better than these charlatans out there. I, I mean. I try to do what I say I do. Like I taught a, pri- a private money class once and I didn't do any private money. And I mean, I have not borrowed it. I haven't loaned it. And I was like, holy shit, I'm about to do a private money class because I have this dude coming in speaking. He raised $6 million, 
and I ask him to speak, but I'm about to stand on stage and say, hey, introducing this private money guy. Well, I need to do a private money deal. And so I raise private money. So it's hard for me to do stuff. So to talk about it, so I really wanted to do a subject two deal. And, you know, it's creative financing. And I, I was real close one time. And this, this lady called me. Tell, tell everyone asked, what subject two is in case they don't know. Okay. A subject two is where you take over a property, a subject to existing mortgage. So they have a loan on it. Right. There's probably no equity in it. And they are about to get foreclosed on usually. And they basically give you the house for free. Mm-hmm. Of course, you read about it and you're like, no way. That never happens. I, you know, every course, you know, Ron, Ron LeGrand and, you know, Brown, Brown guy, you know, you're like, yeah, whatever. And so, and I've, I was very close. Because you know they're trusting you to take over payments, like you can burn them. And and I and you know, a couple of my mentors, they have about eight of them. One guy has eight in Kansas City. It was huge. They passed laws against it really? because you can, you could really burn somebody. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I've always wanted to do a subject too. So this gal calls me. I, I have actually she has a bunch of assets. Her husband was in real estate, and her last property it was a duplex in the front. And a garage apartment that I thought was finished when she told me it wasn't. It was storage. So she said, you know, she wanted a hundred thousand for it. And so next door, there were the house. It's in the middle of the city. Next door, the house is worth three fifty. Now that when I did my comps on that property, it's it was, let's call it Dittimer. The house is on Dittimer Street, and I was like, it's only worth one twenty five because it was a converted duplex it, so it had one meter mm-hmm. it had a well but it was in the city it was an awkward property and the garage wasn't finished and i was like dude and and so and the the, the unit to the right was 438 dollars a month the chick has been there for almost 30 years wow and the cool thing about her she was reading the meter every month and charging the other tenants but if that chick moved out i'm screwed right. and then the second girl was paying $200 a month. She was the niece. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the lady in the back was using it for storage for her medical supply company, which was too, it was huge. It's like 1500 square foot garage. So I was like, she was charging 200. Now the first two units, they're worth about 650 a piece. And the back was probably worth 400. But I couldn't kick out the 30-year-old tenant. She was handicapped, and I felt bad. The girl, the $200 one, she was getting over. And the lady in the back, I could probably juice her up. Right. And I was like, I'm not going to buy this for $120 because it wouldn't appraise because I do no money down deals now. It has. To, I have to buy property at 75%. 70 is my number. 75, I'll do it. 80, it, it's only going to come in at $120. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm sorry, I can't buy it. And just talking to her, she was like, I just want $25,000 cash. F- for what? Well, I got this house for sale. I want to buy my dream house. Well, this lady's like 70 years old. You don't need no dream house at 70 years old. What's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> and she has a house debt free, but she can't sell it because she has it overpriced. Well, that's your problem. Right. So she can't sell her house that she's in. She wants to buy this new crib. And she only needs 25000 net. And I said, Okay. <laughs> I said, what do you owe on the mortgage? She owes 75. I said, how about this? What if I give you $25,000 cash? I take over your mortgage. How much is your payment? Four sixty-eight a month. Okay, well, it cash flows with the old lady at four sixty-eight, with the uh, or four something, and the girl two hundred. That's six hundred. The girl. So the property brings in about two eight sixty-eight a month. Hey, I'm going to cash flow two hundred bucks, but I got to put down twenty-five thousand. Sure. And with a subject two, I've got to deed it into a trust because if you take it over by title, it'll accelerate it. Right. But I read her docs and her doc says that this is a assumable loan. So I call the bank and I'm like, hey, I want to you know, assume this loan. Yeah, you can assume it with 30% down. Well, idiot, I can go get a freaking loan for 30% down. So I said – Puck you, see you later. So I was like, listen, I can't. She, this girl was desperate. She's like, I'm done being a landlord. I'm 70 years old. I want to buy my dream crib. I'm like, I hope and pray that I'm never like this. Hmm. Here's the deal. This is all you get. 25000 cash. I take over payment. She said yes. 
I said, oh, no. So this is really going to go down. Right. Like, so I call my homie in Nashville. I'm like, or Tennessee. I was like, I need, I need subject to docs and I need trust docs. He's like, okay. So he sends me docs. I trade with him. I give him some of my docs. We're homies. We trade. We're cool. Yeah, that's cool. So now I got to come up with 25,000. Now, you know, I have 25, but I don't want to give out 25. And I for sure don't want to pay an attorney. Mm -hmm. So I partner with an attorney. I say, look, (laughs) I got this asset. And here's the caveat. The next door neighbor wants to buy the asset for 150. So that's what the old lady told me when she sold it to me. And I was like, why don't you sell it to them? Well, they can't buy it because they have property that they're trying to sell. Oh, okay. So I was like, okay, I'll do this acquisition. I'll have a hundred in it, and then I'll get fifty. So I called my friend. She's an attorney. She's amazing. She's like, I'll do it. I'll do the trust. We'll do a fifty-fifty closing fees. So I showed up with thirteen thousand. She showed up, and I went to a title company. Now this the subject to I did before I was a table closing, but they showed up with with all the cash, and they. So there was no subject to. So this is my first real subject to. And um, so the my attorney friend, she pulls all the docs. Then she gets them done. She sends me the docs. I read the docs. And then the closing company says, hey, the attorney, their attorney needs to read the docs. So I was like, here we go. Another attorney. They're going to shut this deal down. That attorney approved my docs. Awesome. I'm fixing to sell these docs. <laughs> like <laughs> no, two attorneys just cleared Oklahoma trust docs. Yeah, sure. I can't believe it. That's so incredible. I'm like, this is can't this can't be happening. So I show up to closing with thirteen grand. She shows up at the closing thirteen grand. We have a trust that we both own. Boom, takeover payment. Make one month a payments. I collect the eight hundred bucks from the tenants. I pay the four hundred and sixty something dollar mortgage. Everything's rolling. Everything's great. This is a month ago. I'm like, fat boy, Steven, you got to knock on the next door neighbor. So when I was at closing, the older lady that I bought it from, she gave me the next door neighbor's phone number. So I'm going to call this chick after I close because I don't want to call her before. I'm like, this is going to be the best podcast ever. (laughs) I call the phone number disconnected. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, all right, we got this asset. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to sell this thing. Well, now... I'm like, Stephen, it's been a month. I have not driven over there to that property. And the tenants are calling. I raised the rent on the tenants. They're all upset with me. I'm like, except for the old lady, the the, the 30-year-old lady, because I have a soft spot for her. Yeah. Plus, she's running my meter. So let's leave right. that alone. Right. You know, right. So let's not shake the tree. <laughs> let's not be greedy. But hey, chick, you're paying $200 a month. You, you know, you're getting over. Right. So I'm like, I put on my calendar, go by and get this girl's phone number. Go by. For like two, three weeks click by. I was like, screw it. I got this mentor. This kid wants me to mentor him. He wants to roll with me. Okay. So I think <laughs> a day, we driving around. I'm like, let's go buy this crib. I knock on this girl's door. Lady opens the door. Is your name Erica? Yeah. I own the house next door. I'm selling it. I'm about to put it on the MLS. And here's my motivation. I have this deal in Florida that I have to put down money on. The fa- one thing I learned about buying outside of your zone is that you can anyone will loan you money with 25% down. Wow. <laughs> no one told me that. Well, that's the truth. Everyone always yells at me, how do you get no money down deals? Well, cuz I buy right. But if you want if you want to get in a game and you listen to some real gurus, there the, you got to put some money down. Well, the true real estate investor doesn't want to put money down. That's mm-hmm. me. That's you. That's what we want to do. So I was like, I need to come up with some cash in 60 days to close this big deal in Florida. And I was like, man, I got to sell this property. I got 13000 tied up in it. If I just make another 5000 I'm content. Like, seriously. Mm-hmm. So I'm now I'm motivated. I'm going to put this mother on the MLS, like, today. So I drove over there. I knock on the door. Hey, I'm, I'm just going to give you a heads up. I'm selling this thing. Before I put a sign out front, I'm going to give you the opportunity. She looks at me like I'm some psycho. I'm like, this is the deal. And I, I, I need, this is like dating somebody. I didn't get her phone number. So I give her my phone number. I'm like, damn it. I need to drive back over there. But I'm like, the girl calls me the next day. 
And I, I tell her, she asked me how much it's for sale for. I say, I knew that the old lady that sold me the property that they threw out 150. So of course people negotiate. I said 159. Yep. So she calls me. Yes, uh, this happened on Saturday. She calls me 105. I said, chick, listen, no. She's like, I saw you on the county that you paid 100 for it. I said, hey, girl, I got more than 100 in it. Okay, so let's just start there. I got time, holding costs. No. Talk mm-hmm. to you later. Click. Now, just so you know, I just want to say this. My wife's Hispanic, so this lady was Hispanic. So if you know about negotiating with Hispanics, this is where this rolls. And I knew this. Okay, I know they live in a three hundred fifty thousand dollar house. I know they got about eight people living in that house. So, because there were seven cars out front, <laughs> and I know that this house next door would be the most amazing compound because now they'll have two acres, right? And now they'll have three units. And I know Hispanic people are super savvy. So I go, no. She <laughs> she call she calls me back fifteen minutes later. Um. I go, I, I, I threw out one, I don't remember the where it went. She was like 110 or something, 115. I said, girl, listen, one, 140. She go, I hang up on her again. She calls me back. We go this, we go for the whole Saturday, I'm negotiating with this chick. Back and forth, calls. Right. And she, I go, we finally landed on, I go, my lowest offer is 130. And she's like, I can close Tuesday, and I don't want to close with a title company. I said, Hey, girl, you know, you kind of want to close with a title company. <laughs> like, <laughs> I could just take your money and run. You know, she's uh, we settle on one twenty eight. I like it. So I close tomorrow at one o'clock. Awesome. You're gonna make so, good. You're gonna double your money on that one. Yeah. So That's I'm gonna awesome. split it with my partner. I mean, sure. I'll make you know. Like I just – because, oh, I forgot to tell you, my back tenant was so upset with me that I raised her rent that she came in here crying. Can, I, what if I prepay six months? Would you not raise me? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so I took that girl's 1200 bucks like the first, you know a couple of weeks ago or – but I got to refund it back to the Hispanic yeah. folks. Yeah, sure. So I I'm think they're going to show up with like 127 I'll probably net like 13 I'll get my 13 back. Yep. All 26 and I'm like I don't know if you believe in Jesus but but yeah. I needed that $25,000 to close this other deal. That's awesome. And I, so that I'm that is my place best. in Florida. You got to play you got to get a rental property in Florida cuz I'm telling you Florida's going to pop off. Yeah. I, I know I know this. And uh anyway, long story short, that is one of my best deals. Because I did it subject to, now I know how to do subject to, so I have confidence. If a lady asks me, because when I first did my very first subject to, she asked me, and I and I learned from a great friend, Thomas Morgan, full disclosure, like I'm full disclosure, like there's no, like I'm trying to make money off of you. Hey, no, listen, no smoke and mirrors, yeah, yeah. Listen, look, you're, you're, I want you to buy my five dollar audio. I think five dollars is the deal. Now I could price it for three hundred, and some dummy will buy it. <laughs> But five dollars, everyone should buy it. But they're yeah. dumb; they don't spend the five dollars. So that's why you're successful, and they're not. I want to be upfront. The lady asks me, "Have you done a sub? Have you done a, a, a subject two before?" No, I haven't, ma'am. But now, I can't, and that's why I'm trying to loan out private money right now. So when I call call you up in six years, when you're worth, you know, three million, I'm going to be like, "Bro, can I borrow fifty? I, I can say I have loaned. And I have borrowed. Absolutely. Because I've borrowed. I've done a private money deal close one. Awesome. Because I didn't want to be a hypocrite sure. to that class. Because one day, so, I mean, one day, like, you know, Rich poor dad, he's scrutinized all the time. I feel sorry for that guy. You know, they beat that dude up like a pulp. Of course. <laughs> but, I mean, who cares if the guy, the rich dad's fake? Who gives a rip? Right. I know he owns apartments because he owns an apartment in Oklahoma, in Tulsa. He owns a, a sky rise in Tulsa. We, I know this. Wow. And so he does own property. Now, it, maybe it's embellished. Maybe it's not. But let me tell you something. I'm wealthy because of that book. F everybody else. Stop beating the dude up. 
Rock yeah, he, he got sued by his co-writer. Yes, Char- you know Sharon Lecter is legit. I like her. I I met her. I met them both back in the nineties. You know when I I met them, and they were legit. You know, yeah, they had their courses are kind of outrageous. Yeah, people are getting jacked. Well, you're dumb for putting out your credit card. No one held the gun to your head to say, "Give me forty eight thousand dollars and I'll coach you." You know, and it's not even Rich Dad Poor Dad. He doesn't even own that brand. He he owns the brand, but he licensed that brand out. No right. one knows that. Right, right. But hey, let's attack Rich Dad Poor Dad. But you know, I love the real person that can grasp concept that take responsibility. You know, the guy motivated me, and I'm thankful. Millions of people. Yeah, I mean, serious. It's cool. It's Millions just of people. This is cool to know that people have benefited from his labor and i hope and pray that and that's why i wrote my book like for real like i read every real estate book i could get my hands on i read rich dad poor dad and when i sat down and said when i sold my bridal company i said what's my dream what do i want to do Uh, my dream was to write a book since i was a child but i never knew that it would be a credibility kit until seven ten years ago so then i was like i'm gonna write the very best effing book in the world that this guy did it and I'm going to document it, and I'm going to put addresses on it. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I wrote the book, and the editor came back to me, and he was like, hey, you sure you want these addresses in here? You know, don't you want to change? And I changed some names because there's some people I blast in there. <laughs> like, for real. Probably like, a good idea. Yeah, because I got bent over, like, from realtors, like, for real. Like, I, someone stole deals from me. It's just crazy what's out there. And I'm glad you need to know that. Because don't be. This is not a fun game. This is not everybody's all integrity. There's shady people out there doing subject twos. There's shady people locking up contracts intentionally to go back and renegotiate to because he get, locks up that contract. A wholesaler locks up that contract from an older lady and then comes back six weeks later and says, "I can't close because it's too high." Right. And the lady takes a dive and she's like spent that money ten times in her head. Right. I mean, I just think that's just shady. Like close, like when I lock up a contract, I want to close it. Absolutely, or totally makes sense. I, I, if I can't flip it, that's why I offer low, and that's why I don't get deals. But shoot, if you're going to sell me that house for ten grand, I'm gonna lock it up. Right, absolutely. No, you're doing it right. That's that's how you got to run your business. And I think any everyone who's listening can really take what you're saying to heart about. There are a lot of people out there. You got to be leery. You know, you got you got to have uh, you got to have that sense about you. That there's going to be somebody that could potentially be ripping you off. So use your head, you know, be smart about it. But you also got to pay that forward. Do the right thing. Yeah, and ask. I mean, listen to your radio show. I mean, I'm so excited that you're doing it because we have we have a lot of similarities personality. More than you know, it's creepy actually. Yeah, we actually almost look again. Well, I'm looking at (laughs) your freaking face. I'm like, you know, I actually, you know, you know, back in the day, I'm not I'm not gay, but back in the day, a space in your tooth was actually sexy. Yeah, no, that's why I keep it. No, I mean, I'm serious. There's still people that like it. You just you there, know. there, there is. I mean, I'm not trying to call you out, <laughs> but I remember because my friend had a st- uh, space in his tooth and he had a rubber band on it. Like, <laughs> so, he was so insecure about his tooth. I had, I had jacked up teeth. I got braces, yeah. and later in life, which was the society, you know, that was if I, if I could tell you about a regret, put that down on your next person you interview. What regrets do you have? Sure. I wish I would have got my teeth fixed because I had a. Uh, it looked like every photo looked like I, uh, it was a shadow and it looked like I was missing a tooth. So I would never would smile. And, you know, it's $4,000 to get braces done, you know, 15, 20 years ago, man, I wish I would have did it earlier. Yeah. You know, but we look alike. It's freaky. <laughs> That's why I'm growing my hair out. So that that was going to be my last question to you is, uh, besides, <laughs> besides your wife, are, are we like best friends now? Yeah. We're, we're BFF homie. All right. That's awesome. I love it. All right, man. That's all I got for you today. I totally, totally appreciate you taking the time. We've been on, we've been on the call here for about two hours. It's awesome. A lot of good information, all about Stephen Van Cowenberg out of Oklahoma City. And uh, if you want to contact him or listen to his podcast, you go to the Savvy Radio Show dot com. That's Savvy Radio Show dot com. Awesome, Stephen. Thank you. I'll see you soon. All right. All right, bud. Take care, man. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Investor Empowerment Series radio show. Be sure to tune in next week for another empowering episode. We welcome your feedback, so please rate us on iTunes and Stitcher and visit us at www.investorempowermentchicago.com or tannisgrouprealty.com.
Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 